Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will look at precision or standard errors of OLS estimate. So by the end of this lesson, you will learn how to measure precision of OLS estimates through their standard errors. The least squares estimators are obtained from sample data. Since data are likely to change from sample to sample, the estimates will also change accordingly. Therefore, we need some measure of reliability or precision of the estimates. In statistics, the precision of an estimate is measured by its standard error. So the variance and standard errors of the estimate are, in terms of the slope coefficient, we have the variance of beta 2 hat equals sigma squared divided by the sum of square deviations of x. And the associated standard error is simply the square root of the variance. For the intercept coefficient, the variance of beta 1 hat equals the sum of the squared values of x divided by the sample size n times the sum of squared deviations of x, and all this is multiplied by sigma squared. The associated standard error of beta 1 hat is also the square root of the variance of beta 1 hat. The sigma squared is the constant or homoscedastic variance of the error term, which we normally refer to as the true variance. The homoscedastic variance can be estimated using this particular formula, sigma hat squared equals the sum of ui hat squared divided by n minus 2, where the sigma hat squared is the OLS estimator of the true but unknown variance sigma squared. Notice that the sigma squared is actually the population true variance, but since you are likely to work with sample, you end up estimating this population variance, which is the sigma hat squared you are seeing on the screen n minus 2 is what we call the number of degrees of freedom and the sigma ui hat squared is a sum of the residual squared or what we call residual sum of squares, RSS for short. So the sum of the residual squared equals the sum of the square deviations between the actual y and that of the estimated y. Now, by taking the square root of the true variance, we obtain the formula that is shown on the screen where sigma hat is called the standard error of estimate or the standard error of the regression. Now, let us look at the features of the variances of OLS estimate. One, the variance of the slope coefficient beta 2 is directly proportional to the true variance but inversely proportional to the sum of square deviations of x. So, given the true variance, or holding the true variance constant, the larger the variation in the values of x, that is an increase in the sum of the square deviations of x, the smaller the variance of beta 2 hat, and hence the greater the precision with which the population parameter beta 2 can be estimated. Also, if you hold the sum of square deviations of x constant, the larger the true variance, the larger the variance of beta 2 and hence the less precise you are at estimating the population parameter beta 2. We can also take it from the angle of the sample size. If the sample size increases, then the number of terms in the sum of square deviations of x will also increase, which causes the variance of beta 2 hat to decrease, resulting in a greater precision of the estimated population parameter. The second feature is that the variance of the intercept coefficient beta 1 hat is directly proportional to the true variance and the sum of the squared values of x, but inversely proportional to the sum of the squared deviations of x and the sample size. So practically, what this means is that if the true variance increases, then the variance of beta 1 hat will also increase and leading to a lower precision in estimating the population parameter beta 1. If the sum of the squared values of x also increases, then the variance of beta 1 will also increase as well. If the sample size n or the sum of the squared deviations of x increases, then the variance of beta 1 hat will tend to decrease, resulting in a greater precision in estimating the intercept coefficient beta 1. The third feature is that since beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat are estimators, they will not only vary from sample to sample, but in a given sample, they are likely to depend on each other. And this kind of dependence is measured by the covariance between them. So the covariance of beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat equals the negative of the mean of x 
which is x bar, multiplied by the variance of beta 2 hat. Since the variance of beta 2 hat is always positive, as is the variance of any variable, the nature of the covariance between beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat depends on the sign of x bar. If x bar is positive, then the covariance will be negative, as the formula shows, but if the x bar is negative, then the covariance will be positive. In the next lesson, we will go ahead and look at the Gauss-Markov theorem.